asks us for what he calls us to do. He graces us for what he calls us to do. When the grace lives, we know it. You know, we've been in situations, Dan and I, where we have been so comfortable and so loved where we were and what we were doing. Loved it. And if God hadn't lifted the grace and God hadn't made it uncomfortable, we never would have changed that situation. But all of a sudden, that grace lifts, and you see things completely differently. Has anything changed? Nothing's changed. It's simply the fact that the grace has lifted because God's trying to move you on. So while you're in the thing, he equips you and he graces you to walk in those shoes. So going on, let us use them. What's he talking about using them? The gifts that have been given to each one of us. He whose gift is prophesied, let him prophesy according to the proportion of his faith. He's, he whose gift is practical service, let him serve. He who teaches, to his teaching. He who exhorts, which is encourages, to his exhortation. He who contributes, let him do it simplicity and liberally. He who gives aid and superintends, do it with zeal and single-mindedness. Single-mindedness there, he basically is talking about you don't have an ulterior motive. That's what, he's, that's what that means there. He who does acts of mercy with genuine cheerfulness and joyful eagerness. In other words, we all have different responsibilities. We all have to, we're not all supposed to be all things to everybody. We cannot do that. What is it? Are you an encourager? Are you a challenger? Are you an uh, edifier? Um, are you one that gives? Are you one that um, prophesies, teaches? What is it that you do? And do that. Do what God's called you to do. And don't try and do everybody else's job too. It makes you want out and others aren't allowed to step in where they need to step in. If it's our gift, we should walk in it, delighting and rejoicing in the Lord as we do. The word says, do everything as unto the Lord. We walk in those giftings, delighting and rejoicing in the Lord as we walk in them. Now the corporate calling. I'm not going to read this word for word. I'm just going to kind of uh, swing through it. We are all supposed to walk in all these things, no excuses. You can't say, oh, that's not my gifting. I'm not really called to that. Obviously, first is to love, and let your love be sincere. Love one another with brotherly affection, like you love your brother, like you love you know, your sister, your sibling, basically. Show honor to one another, one another. Never lag in zeal, always serving the Lord. Rejoice and exult in hope. Be steadfast and patient in suffering and tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of God's people. Pursue the practice of hospitality. Bless those who persecute you and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. As long as you can, your part in it is, be in harmony and be in peace with everyone. You know, sometimes you don't have a, you, can, you only have half the power in that. Somebody has to reciprocate. But to the best of your ability, you be in peace with them. As far as it depends on you. Uh, certainly you are not supposed to overestimate yourself. You're supposed to not think of yourself uh, more haughty than you should, really. Basically, keep a humble opinion of yourself. Be uh, not above certain tasks. You know, as all that we just read points out, you know, there's things we're called to individually, and there's things we're all called to walk in. And we have to ask God for the discernment to recognize and know the difference. Instead of everybody trying to walk in everything, we can't do it. Um, it's like a, a one-man band kind of thing, you know? When you go and see those things, it, even if it's good, it's distracting. It's, it, you can't quite focus on it. God's called each of us to individual giftings and corporate responsibilities. We've got to walk in them and trust Him to show us. Ask Him, then trust Him to show you. Then be ready to walk in it. Just simply go and walk in it. One thing I know we're all called to do for certain is we're all called to preach the good news. Every one of us are supposed to go and preach the good news. Now, we need to know the how, the where, and the when. Is it to our neighbor? Is it to our teachers, our classmates, our co-workers, our Sunday school, our children's church, our congregation? Is it to the city, to the state, to this nation? Is it to all the nations? We've just got to simply know, what am I, where am I supposed to preach the good news? Because we're all supposed to preach it. Just to one person, to thousands. Whatever it is, we're supposed to preach the good news. We ask God the how, the when, and the where of that. God wants to, and I'm closing with this, God wants to use all of us. We all beg for his glory to be poured forth from us. We all beg, we sing for 
for it. We cry out for it. We want to be a reflection of God's glory. That's what we want. But we have to be functioning in the anointing he's poured on us for that time in order to be a reflection of his glory. That's how it works. We must be in the capacity he has for us to be a reflection of his glory. He, he pours forth and he, uh, I guess, exudes from us as we're walking in the shoes he has for us for that moment in time. God will breathe on what he's called you to do. He will equip you. He will grace you for it. Strengthening each of us for every step that we have to take in him. One of my favorites, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He strengthens us for what he calls us to. His grace is sufficient for us in all things. We simply have to cry out to him, what am I anointed for for this season? For right now, Lord, speak to me. Show me, and I'll walk in it. I'll put the shoes on. I don't care how uncomfortable they are at first. I'm going to walk through the pain. I'm going to break them in and be determined to do that. Not to decide it. Uh, you know, like I've had shoes, and they've really pinched and hurt, and it's tempting. As a matter of fact, I got a new pair of sneakers for Christmas. This is a good example, and I really have to with this. Uh, I got a new pair of sneakers for Christmas. Well, my old ones were very comfortable, but they really weren't providing the support I needed, so I got a new pair. Well, the first few times I ran in them or walked in them, I had some pretty good blisters. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going back to the old sneakers. They're way more comfortable. You know, and I did the Band-Aid thing and all that stuff, and I wore the old sneakers one time, but they weren't the same as the new sneakers once I tried the new sneakers on, even though they, the new sneakers carried a little bit of pain. So I'm like, no, I'm not even putting put those old sneakers on anymore. I'm just going to break these in, I'm going to tough it out, and then the, and now they're perfect. Now they're great. They're comfortable, and they're what I need. They're the support that I need. So let's just make sure that we don't shrink back from something because it's a little uncomfortable at first. And walk in all that God has for us for this new season. As we step in that obedience, I believe signs and wonders, no matter how small and no matter how big, will begin to just wrap around us and follow us everywhere we go. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you.